All right, everybody, today we are going to read chapters three, four, and five of The Secret School. So we left off with chap at chapter three, and Ida was thinking, could she really become a teacher? As Ida parked the backfiring car in their fr farmyard driveway, bleeding lambs, bleating lambs, tails up, ran in fright, while Snooker, the old mare, looked over the corral fence. Felix, Ida whispered after they got out, don't tell Ma or Pa what happened at sc in school. Felix looked turned quizzical. How come? I need to tell them my way, understand? No, but okay, he said, accepting as always his older sister's ways. Ida opened the front door of their log cabin. It had been built by her father when he came from eastern Colorado years ago. At the time, people thought there was gold in the surrounding mountains. A red-faced Mrs. Bidson was in the steamy kitchen, stirring laundry atop the wood-burning stove. Baby Shelby was on her lap. Hi there, she called. How was school? Fine, Ida said glumly. You sure? Yes. Felix started a look at Ida. She put her finger to her lips. Want some help with Shelby? She offered. Just been waiting for you to come home, Mrs. Bidson said with a smile as she handed the baby over. Felix, your paws in the barn. Said to say you were needed as soon as you got in. Felix gulped down a glass of milk and then stuffed a hunk of bread in his mouth. Before racing away, he beckoned Ida over and whispered, Why didn't you tell Ma that Miss Fletcher is leaving? I'm not sure what I'm going to do. He screwed up his face. Do? What the, what's that supposed to mean? Tell you when I've made up my mind. Ida stayed with the baby for an hour, then got on with her regular chores. She mucked out the horse's stall and milked the cow. Working along with her father, she checked the early lambs, and finally, after she'd helped her mother with supper preparations, Ida set out the soaking barrels for the next day's laundry. At supper, Ida didn't say a word about school. Most of the talk was about a new hayfield Mr. Bidson was thinking about fencing in. That evening, up in the loft bedroom Ida and Felix shared, Ida put aside the year-old Saturday evening post she'd been reading, lay back, and stared up at the wooden plank roof. She liked to imagine different pictures for the grain patterns. It always soothed her. One night it was a map, another time it was secret writing. Sometimes it was even music. Tonight it was a road to school. But as soon as Felix was asleep, Ida slipped out of her bed and crept down the stairs to the kitchen. Her mother was still awake, boiling baby bottles in a big pot. Hello, love, her mother said with a quick, tired smile. Thought you'd gone to sleep a long time ago. Felix says, I couldn't. Something on your mind? Ida perched upon a chair and pulled up, pulled her flannel nightgown over her toes. Can we talk, she asked gravely. Her mother continued working. I'm listening. Where's Pa? Out in the barn. The tractor motor's leaking. This girl talk? It's school, Ida hesitated, then said. Mom, Miss Fletcher's mother is very sick. On Wednesday, she's leaving to go to Iowa to be with her. Oh, dear. And Mr. Jordan, he's head of the school board, I know, said they wouldn't replace her. For heaven's sake, why not? Said it was too late in the term, Ida paused. I think he just wants to save money. Times are getting tight, honey. The valley doesn't have much money. I'm sorry about Miss Fletcher. I am too, but they're closing the school for the year. Closing? And Ma, the thing is, if the school closes, it means Tom and I can't take the final exam. Oh, honey, you've been working so hard. Ma, it's a lot more. No exam, no high school. Mrs. Bidson thought for a moment. Then she said, Ida, love, high school was only a possibility. Like we told you, you're going away. Depends on how we do on the farm anyway, year by year. I know. Ida watched her mother pluck the baby bottles from the hot water and set them to dry. Ma, she said after a moment, you know what Tom said? Guess I don't. He had an idea about how we could keep the school going. How? Said, I could be the teacher. Mrs. Bitson looked around. You mean you? Teaching? Ma, I've been going to school almost forever. I guess I should know how to do it. And you know, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Think they'd hire you? Ida shook her head. Not for money. I don't understand. Just doing it. Mrs. Bitson sat down, all attention now. Honey, you're only 14. No one needs to tell me how smart you are. But think, if you are... If you were a teacher, you'd have all that fig figuring out of the students' lessons, checking all their work, plus being in charge of the schoolhouse. It'd be hard making everyone mine, too, and you'd still have your own schoolwork to do on top of all that. What do you, What do the other children have to say? Don't know. It was Tom's idea. I never had even thought about it before he mentioned it. Well, Tom's sweet on you. Ma, of course he is. Anyway, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Maybe, her mother said with a quick smile. As for you teaching, I suppose it might work, but only if the other children went along. And I guess you'd need to speak to Mr. Jordan. Ida winced. Why him? Like you said, Mr. Jordan's head of the school board. You'd need his permission, wouldn't you? Ida remained still for a moment. Then she said, 
I guess, but do you think I should even try being teacher? You've set on trying to get to high school, aren't you? Ida nodded. Th and you need your exam to do it, right? Ida nodded again. Ida, you getting to high school would be a family first. But you got to keep in mind what your pa told you. If we go, we still need to pay for your room and board in town. And even though Felix is getting older, he's only seven, keeping things running around here is going to be harder without you. I'd be home on weekends when the snow let you. Ma, it's just now I'm talking about. Maybe I won't tell Pa what I'm doing. Mrs. Bidson frowned. Not sure I like that. The point is, your chores won't ease up none, even if you are the teacher. We need you pitching in here, too. But do you think I could do it? Being teacher now, well, I guess it would be unusual, I guess. But most th most things seem so when they're new. I can't see how it would hurt you any. Think I'd be good? Ida, love, though your father's key on reading, neither of us got much schooling. Bit of writing, sums, I think you'd be good, but honey, it's not my world. I know, Ida said, suddenly recalling that at 5.30 in the morning would be milking time again. She said, I'd better go to bed, and headed to the loft. Ida, Mrs. Bidson called after her. Ida looked back. If you decide to do it, I'll give you something. What's that? Hairpins, Mrs. Bidson said with a smile. If you put your hair up, you'll look older.